Top story we're pleased to have Vice President Mike Pence joining us now from Washington. I'd like to get some specifics tonight, Mr. Vice President. Uh, let's start yeah. with problem solving. You did that very well as governor of Indiana. You solved a lot of problems in that state. Thank so you. let's start with sanctuary cities. What do you think the solution to that is? Well, I think it's taking a strong stand for the rule of law in this country it was a centerpiece of the president's message that you just said has resonated all across this country about respecting the rule of law. It, it begins with building a wall, border security, but internal enforcement and rejecting sanctuary cities but how do you as the reject? policy of the United uh, States you, is key. You know the governor of California, the governor of Washington right. state, all right? They're not going to cooperate with you and, and Homeland Security. They're not. So is, now that you have your attorney general in place, um, right. is there a plan to convince the sanctuary city people to cooperate? Well, I think you can just rest assured that uh, the agenda that President Trump laid out last night, including all of the elements that that he's committed to to end illegal immigration and bring sanctuary cities to an end is a part of that agenda, is we're going to use the broadest range of, of methods uh, and resources of the federal government uh, to bear to, to make that happen. I, I'm taking you, uh, you're speaking generally, but I assume you're talking about federal money being denied, states and cities that don't cooperate with Homeland Security. I assume you're talking about that. You can't send tanks in. You can't force well, them to do it, but you can hurt them financially. So I assume that's on the table. Well, I, uh, look, we're going to work closely with the Congress uh, in moving legislation to to fill out the president's commitment for border security and internal enforcement. I know sanctuary cities is going to be a part of that, but look, I, I know the president is going to evaluate uh, every option that we have in terms of the, the authority of the federal government to end a practice that, that is really no, uh, that's gonna be an it, interesting it is not battle. contributing to the well-being of the nation or the safety and security of our people. Okay. Um, there was a lunch yesterday in the White House. You were not there. I was not there. So the two most charismatic people in the United States weren't invited. <laughs> but it was, it was anchor people uh, and President Trump. And, and the anchor people came out and they were talking amongst themselves saying, gee, it was a kinder, gentler president who may now give law-abiding illegal aliens, that is people who, yes, they crossed here illegally, but they have since been here not caused trouble. Maybe he'll give them a break. Maybe there'll be a pathway of immigration. We didn't hear that in the speech, but is that a possibility in a Trump administration? We're focusing, as the president has said repeatedly, on removing criminals who represent a threat to our family, who also are illegal immigrants from this country. And then, as the president said in, in Arizona last summer, then, then we'll see about some of these other issues and, and the remaining population. But we're going we're gonna to enforce the law, uphold the rule of law, and he's going to continue the vigorous efforts to do that. All right. So what I'm hearing is it's possible once the border wall and the enforcement kicks in that an examination of people who are law abiding, they might get some kind of break. Well, I, you know, you could ask the president what his perspective is on that the next time you all visit. But what I can tell you is that before we get to any of that, uh, President Trump and our administration are committed to following through on the things the American people okay. agree on. Um, the president mentioned Chicago last night as a mm. uh, violent crime situation. Again, right. are there discussions, specific discussions, because the local authorities in Chicago, Cook County and Illinois are not going to be able to stop this. It's quite apparent. Well, I think the president has expressed himself over the last year about his, his deep concern about the, the tragic loss of life. Uh, through through violence and gang violence in, in Chicago and he expressed that last night before the Congress. We as Americans should recognize that the men and women who serve in uniform of law enforcement are, are not a force for division. They're the best of us. They deserve the support of the rest of us. So we're also going to look for ways to continue to support law enforcement with the resources and the training that they need uh, to accomplish their mission to protect our families and, and go home safe to theirs. Has there been any discussion of a specific thing in Chicago the federal government might do? You know, not to my knowledge, Bill, but I can tell you, I've heard the president again in public and in private express his deep concern and frustration. But when you get specifics, we, that's what everybody's waiting for now. We're all waiting for, okay, specifically, 
what's going to happen. Finally, right. um, our pal Putin has been kind of quiet uh, since I called him a killer in the interview with the president. Um, I think you should go over there and talk to Putin. No plans on my part, but we made a strong commitment to NATO. Uh, we also made it very clear that, that, that two things are true. We're going to hold Russia accountable. Uh, uh, for, uh, for an ending violence in eastern Ukraine. But in the same breath, our, our president uh, continues to believe that if there is a way that we can find common ground with Russia, particularly in the fight against ISIS, he's determined to pursue that. Um, you know, everybody's talking about the, uh, the widow of the Navy SEAL and, mm. and what a fine moment that was uh, in a myriad of different ways, and we're going to have a, a segment on that coming up here on this program. But then today you heard some people uh, saying that um, Mrs. Owens was being used as a political pawn and things like that. Does that make you angry? You seem like a calm guy. Uh, that, that, that made me angry. And then make you angry? It does a great disservice to a, a great American family. You know, the, the, you know I, w I was in the Oval Office the day that the president called uh, Corinne Owens and expressed his condolences with her. I, he traveled to Dover Air Force Base and, and was there to comfort the family when Ryan's remains came home. And the president felt very strongly uh, that they should be given the opportunity to be there in the well of the Congress. But also what was really special, I thought, was that in that moment, that sustained applause, the likes of which I, I, I never saw when I was in Congress for 12 years, that what that family saw and all of our servicemen and women saw is that while we may have divisions on policy, we may argue an awful lot on the issues, that when it comes to standing with the men and women who serve and their families, we are united as a nation. And, and I have to tell you, uh, Bill, it was deeply moving to me to see that fitting tribute. And, and that family and, and all of our armed forces will remain in our prayers and in our grateful hearts. And we'll never forget the courage and the sacrifice right. of Ryan Owens. You're being very diplomatic, but when I saw that today, I, I, that was just, because I think yeah. you're right. I think 99% of Americans believe the way you do, the way President Trump does, the way that I do. 99%, but that 1%, you know, just gets me. I'm, but you're very diplomatic, Mr. Vice President, and we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us tonight. You bet, Bill. Thank you. Next reaction from the Democratic governor of Colorado to the president's speech. Then later, as mentioned, Rivera and Bowling on the Navy SEAL widow. Also, Lou Dobbs on whether the country can financially afford President Trump's vision.